You may have heard of Tim Draper before. He is a billionaire investor, mostly through his investments in tech stocks, and he is an ultra Bitcoin bull. He bought a ton of Bitcoin very early on because he believed in it that much, and he has made a ton of money because of it. You may be wondering if he holds anything else besides Bitcoin. Yes, he does. In a recent interview, he revealed what he has in his portfolio. So in this crypto update, I want to talk about Tim Draper, what he has in his portfolio. Also talk about this huge event that's coming to Bitcoin and Ethereum tomorrow. And it could have major repercussions. So I definitely want to discuss that. Also cover a few projects that I've supported in the past. One is not doing so well. One is doing fantastic. So let's get started. Let's start out with Tim Draper. Many of you have heard of Tim Draper before. He is a very well-known tech investor. And bringing up his Wikipedia site, um, it shows that he invested in Hotmail before it was bought by Microsoft, also Baidu, Skype, Tesla, and there's many, many others. Those are just a few. And of course, he's a big, big Bitcoin bull. His biggest buy came when Silk Road got shut down. 30,000 Bitcoin was seized by the FBI and auctioned off. And guess who bought out all of them? Yes, Tim Draper. And at that time, he bought it for around $300 for each Bitcoin. So think about that. Think about how much he made already. According to this article, Tim Draper had an interview recently and he revealed what he has in his portfolio. And it's not just Bitcoin. Surprisingly, he does own a few altcoins and these are well-known altcoins with the exception of one. Um, so he revealed that he has Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, Tezos, and Aragon. So out of those, the biggest surprise has to be Bitcoin Cash. You know how Bitcoin Cash, um, how it started. It was really contentious with Roger Veer and uh, the Bitcoin developers. And he basically spun that off, right? It's really kind of surprising to hear that Tim Draper actually has Bitcoin Cash. What's funny about this is because um, not too long ago, Tim Draper had his Twitter account hacked, okay? Or supposedly hacked. And... This is a tweet that came out of the account. I recently purchased some BCH. Uh, so easy to buy, use, go to Bitcoin.com. Thank you, Roger Veer Cash for this innovation. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Now, this tweet was removed shortly afterwards and people thought that his hacker uh, put this up because, um, I don't know they, you know, they support Bitcoin Cash. Now people are questioning whether or not this was a legit tweet because now Tim Draper has revealed he does have Bitcoin Cash. So um, it could be it could be that this was removed because he thanked the wrong Roger Veer. This is an impersonator of Roger Veer. And this could be the reason why he actually removed it. Not because his account was hacked. So there's some controversy there. Because people thought that there's no way Tim Draper can, can move to the Bitcoin Cash side, to the dark side. But apparently... Apparently, he did. Not all the way, of course, but he does hold Bitcoin Cash. He also holds Ripple, uh, Tezos, and Aragon. So Ripple, I know you guys uh, know about Ripple. Tezos, not a surprise. Um, Tezos is a very promising uh, protocol uh, network. Aragon is a little surprising. I looked them up. I, I, I know they've been around for a while, but they're basically about creating DAOs. Um, Decentralized autonomous organizations or basically communities, uh, self-sustaining communities. Kind of interesting. The only thing that surprised me is his holdings of Bitcoin Cash. So I just I just don't see it. Maybe it's a precaution. Maybe it's an insurance policy in case Bitcoin Cash somehow takes over. Um, I don't believe he really thinks that, but he is a businessman. So um, you do have to you have to prepare for the worst sometimes. So tomorrow is a big day for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's because tomorrow, half of all the options out there is going to expire. Half. So for Bitcoin, it's about $1 billion worth of 
uh, Bitcoin option contracts is go expire. And for Ethereum, surprisingly, about 500 million. So you're talking about 1.5 billion dollars worth of options that's go expire tomorrow. So this is why traders are are antsy right now. They don't know what's going to happen. This could spur a huge, huge pump, or it could spur a huge dump. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But today, at least, it seems like a little more breathing room. Bitcoin is doing a little better. All coins are doing a little better. So we'll just see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I found this to be interesting, but Atari is coming out with a new console. That's right. They're coming out with a new console that will do a couple things. First of all, um, they're going to they're go allow you to play all these retro games from before, right? And that's pretty cool. But if you get sick of your retro game, they do have blockchain built in. They go utilize blockchain for a couple things. For streaming and also for playing online games. So you could actually download your game and you can play it on your console and you can live stream. So you, you could probably watch like YouTube and uh, and I don't know, Twitch and others. So it, it's, it's kind of interesting that Atari is getting back in the game. You know, obviously, I think they know they can't compete with Microsoft Xbox or Sony PlayStation uh, or even the Nintendo Switch because they're very, very advanced and uh, I, they're not trying to compete with that. But they are trying to come up with a console, you know, that has a lot of retro games. Uh, a lot of people would enjoy playing those still, right, because they grew up with it. But also they're adding some blockchain features into the console. So they're going to really be the first to do this. And this is quite interesting. Um, so we'll see what happens. There's no release date yet. But Atari did say that they have shipped these consoles to warehouses in the U.S. already. So it's just a matter of time um, before they come out. Lastly, I want to talk about two projects I covered in the past. One is doing very good. And one is doing horrible, horrible. So let's start out with the horrible one. Let's start out with the bad news one first. Well, I saw this on Reddit. A former Loom network employee just sent out this revealing email to all Kickstarter backers of their now defunct Zombie Battlegrounds game. This is very, 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 very long and uh, detailed email. Okay, so whenever you have like an ex-employee, you always have to take what they say with a grain of salt, right? Because they could just be salty and they could be making up a lot of stuff you don't know. So I decided to look at Loom's website, and this is what it looks like now. Distributed enterprise platform for healthcare providers, right? Streamline your data, flexible to your needs, distributed and secure. This has nothing to do with Loom. Loom Network, when I first covered it, I liked the fact it was concentrating on scalability for scaling and also games. Um, and they were talking about social media too for a little bit but ultimately what they had was a really easy one-click setup for developers to program a really cool game and they were also creating games of their own right and they had their own scaling solution almost like a second layer solution on top of ethereum i mean it was a good idea it, it was a really good idea and uh i don't know what happened um, and they decide to pivot. Now they no longer want to concentrate on games at all. And they're, they're going for, you know, after healthcare providers. So I started to look at their blog. I think this is the beginning of the end. Back in February this year is when the CEO, Matthew Campbell, stepped down. And one of his counterparts, Vidim um, Macagon, took over. And I think that's when the pivot happened. Um, from gaming to healthcare. Now, healthcare is huge. I realize that, but it's a challenge again to healthcare. Um, there's HIPAA and all these things that they're regulated by, so it's not easy to convert them to put their pa pa uh, patient data or any kind of healthcare data onto a platform that hasn't been vetted. So that's very, very, very hard. So I don't know what exactly is going on, but I do know. That this looks like a mess with the CEO leaving and the company pivoting um, and ex employees coming out saying bad things about it. I'm off this bandwagon. I'm officially off the bandwagon. So, those of you guys that are still in Loom, I would say do your research, do your research quickly, 
and decide if you still want to hold on or leave. Now, moving on to a project that I've been supporting for a long time, Nulls, they have been doing many, many things behind the scenes. So I decided to look at their last two uh, blog posts, and I really like what I see. Number one is their Nerve Network has come out with the Nerve Dex. Of course, Dexes are very hot right now, right? Very, very hot. DeFi is very hot, so I think this is a good move. But the Nerve Network is kind of like a, it's a separate project, but it's an extension of Nulls. Basically, it offers cross-chain interoperability. And because of it, you could definitely build a DEX on, on top of it. And that's what they have. They have a DEX. It's already done. So there's four stable access uh, assets. PAX, USDT, USDC, and DAI. These are the biggest, uh, biggest stable coins out there. And of course, you have NVT, which is NERV tokens. And of course, you have NULLS, right? And this is underway. So this is good. This is definitely a very good start. And it looks like Nulls is diving into um, DeFi a little bit, which is also good. I think right now DeFi is hot. It could definitely help them gain more interest. And that's not even the biggest news. The biggest news is this. Nulls has implemented cross-chain asset circulation with ETH Network, Ethereum. This is big. This is big. I just got done talking about DeFi. Um, this, means, this means that through the use of NERV, you can now have asset swap between nulls and ethereum so you can have you could have DeFi and ethereum um if they didn't want to pay high gas fees for example they could utilize the nerve network and also nulls and nulls DeFi, for example can also access uh ethereum tokens and other erc20 tokens and that's just DeFi. dApps also right so this is big and i don't think anyone's paying attention to this there's a lot of big protocols out there. They seem complete, but they're missing that last bridge portion to be able to do cross-chain interactions, asset swaps, um, and Nulls has that already with Nerve. So this is big. This is really big. Unfortunately, no one paid attention. It hasn't really helped Nulls with their price, but things like this shows that Nulls is still working. They're still developing. They're still trying to get the word out. And eventually when they do, this is going to bring them back to their old golden days. So, again, another big news for Nulls. So there's a big event happening tomorrow. Until then, I think Bitcoin and all coins will probably hover for a little bit as traders decide what to do. Should they go long or short due to what's happening tomorrow? I guess we will have to wait and see. All right, guys, what do you think about Tim Draper's portfolio, his choice of all coins? Do you agree? Are you excited about Atari's new console? And what about Loom Network and Nulls? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for my future videos. Bye-bye.